Hello and welcome. Should you teach yourself to become a software engineer? So maybe you are at a point in your life or your career where you have decided to become a software engineer. The job market for these roles is hot, there is good money to be made, and the type of work that you would do sounds really very appealing. So there are several ways how you could tackle this endeavor really. You could go back to school or university, get a degree in computer science or software development, or just something like this. So these are some good options, but they are slow in a certain way and of course they are not cheap. So second, you could consider going to a coding bootcamp where you learn a lot in a very short time. You would be part of a learning community, there are teachers, you would hit the ground running. These boot camps can be a week long or several months. So to really learn a language you're looking more at several months, like usually between three and six months. But overall it's a much shorter time frame compared to going to college or university. So some of these boot camps come with an official certificate from that specific school, especially really helpful if it's like a, um, a good um, university or college that everyone knows about. Some of these come with a job placement service as well, so when you graduate from the boot camp they help you with find a job. Others have like partner companies that are looking to hire the best people that come out of these coding boot camps. And of course there's the third option then really and that's what this video is about. We're talking about is it normal that you can become a self-taught established software engineer and are there any people out there that actually have done it this way. So the question is should you teach yourself to become a software engineer. It is really totally normal to get into this industry as a self-taught professional. There are no problems really from that perspective. So due to my work and the different companies and industries I have really met quite a few software engineers and several of those were really self-taught and I consider some of them to be really the smartest and brightest people I have really worked with in the past. I was always super impressed when I met these people and see how they are pushing the boundaries of traditional career thinking, planning and how they broke into a field as described. So these folks usually are very motivated. They have self-taught themselves a new skill or a new programming language really from scratch. They have overcome roadblocks and hurdles that really made them a hot commodity in the job market because of these extra skills that they bring to the table. Hey, in case you don't know me, my name is Christoph Putz and I'm a senior IT manager with over 22 years of experience from various different roles and different industries. Here on my YouTube channel we talk information technology and we look at things from various different angles to really help you to have a more fulfilling career in IT or to get into information technology altogether. So let's address some of the biggest concerns right away that you might have being a self-taught software engineer and is it being frowned upon? Is there a preconceived bias or notion that you would be less good than a software engineer that went the traditional route and earned a college degree in software engineering or computer science? Or do you suffer from the old I want to call it imposter syndrome where you feel like you are just not worthy calling yourself a software engineer because you did not go the traditional way via school or college you're self-taught. So one thing I can really reassure you this is not a problem at all. There's literally nothing you should be concerned about from that perspective. As long as you have the right work ethic and everything it is not a problem. So if you have the self-discipline to teach yourself the skill of coding and becoming a software engineer it's actually really a significant asset. And I think it carries market value because it shows that you can overcome certain hurdles, that you are bringing a unique perspective, that you are bringing different traits into the field. And really going through this alone and being self-taught there's so much more power behind it in a certain way. I think it's a great value that you would add to any company. So but before you head down that path filled with confidence that Christoph said you should absolutely do this, you need to come to terms with yourself to determine if this path is really the one for you. Going to college into boot camps that's just a very expensive option. However boot camps especially they speed up the process and get you still so much faster than any of the other approaches and one could argue that the time savings is really worth the money. Boot camps often even offer like a delayed pay option so where you go through the boot camp first you get your first job and then you pay. Or they have a shared income agreement where a portion of your future salary goes to them which can be really a good option for you if you're really confident that you can do this 
Even when you start your first job, you still have too many other obligations and you cannot pay right away. So you're really hoping to land that high paying job and then they get a portion of your salary at that point. And it's like smaller payments. It's not that big lump sum that you would have to do otherwise. So, but in general, going the route of becoming a self-taught software engineer, it is the cheapest and the most convenient option, but it's also the slowest option if you ask me. The DIY approach to become a software engineer saves you money for sure but it forces you to build your approach in a way and also look at a curriculum that makes this work for you. There are plenty of online resources, as you know, especially if you go like for an open source type of language like Python as an example. So, and there's no shortage of tutorials, videos, there are different courses on Udemy, Coursera, and where so many other places. But it's not always so easy for you to judge if the quality of that resource is really good for you, or can you recognize if that online teacher is actually qualified to do so? Or does that specific style work with you? So there are a few things for you to consider to really determine, yes, I can do this. It's just not like picking up a book. There are so many resources, but you have to figure out what is your learning style? And then you have to find the right resource that matches up with your learning style. Learning coding is easy in a certain way because of the large number of resources that are available today. So it was very different many years ago, but today you really have no excuse. There are so many resources. And while it is easy to start learning software engineering, it's also easy to stop when you're going through this and suddenly you're running into roadblocks, you lose motivation and there's nobody really there to guide you or to hold you responsible. So a lack of self-discipline could be really one of those items that throws that entire approach out the window. So, and it would be then very unlikely that you succeed. Even worse, if you lack a certain level of curiosity and motivation to carry on. So your rate of success will be extremely low at that point. It's so critical to look at it from that perspective. It might be a, a smaller item that you look at as a secondary one, but it's really important. And especially important, it's also to highlight the level of curiosity you need to have. Being a software engineer is a rewarding career. If you are able to get over that initial barrier of entry, man, you can have so much fun and then really live out that curiosity. Because if you look at software engineering, it's not just like that you go through something that somebody told you to program this. So, I mean, it's almost like you're an artist in a certain way, especially if you are in a green field setup where you're doing something from scratch. So where you're building, let's say, an algorithm engine from scratch or a game from scratch. So you have to experiment, you have to try different ways to do certain things. And then once you start going, really head down that path because it's so enjoyable with the work that you do. So really determine these things and then be really crystal clear about your end goal in software engineering. Where do you wanna end up? The transition is not as easy as mentioned, but knowing where you see yourself at the very end of that self-taught process, I think it's so important. So whenever you hit a roadblock, difficulties, or you lose motivation, knowing where you want to go, that's really what keeps you going even if the going gets tough. And if you think about these things, this might also give you a clue if you should rather consider a more structured approach to become a software engineer. Maybe you can go to school or college or attend a boot camp in a different way. So think about community colleges or learning certain things yourself and just taking specific classes to fill the gaps. So the financial pressure coming from going to college or university or boot camp could also be that guiding beacon that keeps you on track. So I mean, don't underestimate the power of making that public commitment but also that financial commitment. So it's so critical if you know that you're losing interest if things get difficult or that you're easily sidetracked. I do not wanna drill down too far in regards to these type of things. I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. So you need to understand what your learning style is and what throws you off track in the past so that you can address these things. The two main takeaways are really overcome the initial doubts and concerns about being a self-taught software engineer. It is a non-issue. And then really, as a second item, identify your ability to self-study and learn without a teacher. Give yourself assignments. Make sure that you guide yourself through that program, that you have the right motivation, the right discipline. If money is a big concern, 
Becoming a self-taught software engineer is your best option really. But it may also be the most time-consuming approach. And that's where you have to really weigh in and does it fit your current life situation. So wherever you are in life or with your career, make sure it fits your situation in that moment. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share and discuss it with your friends and peers. I would really like to hear more about it. Hit that like button below, but also leave a comment because I really like to learn from you and understand, okay, what other problems have thrown you off track or what did you find easy or difficult? So thanks again and have a great day. Bye-bye.